I don't want I don't want to start the video like this, but I just got to report a hazard. I was like, all right, I'm going to start the video. I'm going to put these put the headphones on. I got these Sony's, the ones that I love, the 900 STs, and they got a real long cord. And I was standing on the cord, and I went to pick it up and put it over my fucking head, and it, I where it got stepped on, it got caught, and I did that, and I smashed myself in the nose with the left one. So now back to. Real Genius is a fantastic movie that you all need to go watch. I love how I could just change subjects like, like a fucking Ferrari. Um, this, I've done this before. I've done many things that look like this, but this is all new. So, um, JDM, JDS Labs, not JDM. We're not, we're not on Japan. We're not racing yet. Zero Views sponsored race team. Can I see that in the future? Please join the Patreon and subscribe star. That'll be a goal. I'm just going to add that as a goal. I want to race drift trucks in Japan. JDS Labs has been sending me things pretty consistently now for what, like three years? And it was like the original element and then the element stack and then the upgraded, then the atom. Then the element two, which is the combo, which is there, we'll, we'll pick them up. And now this. So this is the newest stack. Here's the old stack. And I'll put it on the table next to the new stack and you can blatantly see. There's almost no difference. I mean, the, Yeah, I don't, I don't think there is. Actually, what was the old, did the old stack actually have anything slightly different? Hmm, I can't tell. But here is this, this is, no, this isn't it. This isn't this, this is this. That was the wrong stack, that's the stack. I'm just, I'm so confused. I'm so, I hit myself in the face. This is the element two. And this is a DAC amp combo. And this is the EL2 amp and EL2 DAC, which takes the two pieces of equipment that are in here, breaks them apart into two separate things, gives them their own power supplies, which are gargantuan and some, where are they? The, 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 here, two of these. These are uh, 16 volt AC, 1000 milliwatt. Milliamp, I'm sorry, milliamp. So instead of having one of those for the DAC and amp, now you have a pair, which is one of the benefits. And the other benefits is, is you get a little more connectivity options because now that you have a separate DAC and amp, you could just take the amp and throw it in the garbage if you wanted to, or take the DAC and move it to the side and put a better DAC. The problem with <clears throat> upgrading any element or EL stack is you really fucking can't. Because every time I hear one of these set up properly, I got USB to this, I've got optical cable to her, and you get out a, a solid set of headphones, you just go, oh, fuck, they don't have to, no one has to buy anything else. No one has to buy it. The Element 2, that, just the combo alone, is like 400 bucks. And that's all you need? I did it in the, um, in, well, there, on my desk now. You can see the DeArt Aquila 2 is now permanently affixed onto my desk. Permanently being, you know, the universe will eventually cool and everyone will die. But until then, that's about as permanent as it gets on my desk. When I put a piece of equipment there. And I'm tempted to take that Aquila 2 that I have right now, a $700 DAC amp combo, and maybe pluck the amp part of this off and just sit it on top of it. And use this as my single ended amp for that desk because as much as I love that DAC amp, and I just reviewed it like two days ago, the single ended portion, I, I sort of like breezed over it a little bit. I was like, yeah, because that's a balance. It's four Whopper Channel balance. It's a beautiful fucking thing. I think this sounds better single ended. In fact, I, I, if you could see the little, little white light, I, I think this sounds better single ended than the 789. 
which isn't saying much. 789 is a balanced amp. It doesn't have a balanced volume knob, but the actual circuitry is designed to have two separate amplifiers feed your headphones. So when you don't use it balanced, it's not quite being used up to its maximum potential. And when you design an amp like this, or an amp DAC stack like this, where there's nothing balanced really involved, that means you're not distracted by balanced. It's one of the reasons I think the Rebel amp performs so well. When you have a, an amplifier and you said, well, it's not gonna be balanced, that means you have to fucking pay attention to what's going on to get the absolute maximum of uh, power and cleanliness and noise floor and separation and signal to noise ratio. And I thought, frankly, I thought JDS Labs had maxed it out last time. The old stack was phenomenal. And I would tell people to buy it and they'd buy it and they'd be absolutely, I'm super happy. And then they wouldn't go for balanced. And then they'd have to abandon it. And that's sad news. And now with this and the, the, the few headphones, few, the few headphones that I have at my disposal to plug into it. Um, yeah, it's one of those, it's one of those like, it makes me sit here just think of what the fuck I'm going to say. Because the the, the the Zeos on the inside doesn't want to tell you, well, everything else is terrible, just buy this. He does, he's lazy, because then his job is literally, welcome to Z-Reviews, just buy the uh, yeah, L stack. Just buy the L stack. Welcome to Z-Reviews, EL stack. Did you buy it yet? Yeah, great. But there is something about both the DAC upgrade, and I have the old DAC, and I have the new DAC, and I have the old amp, and I have the new amp, and I could literally set them up and compare directly, why? This is obvious, because I know that, that, that that's the tube, we're gonna talk about that yet, but the, the stack, I knew what it could do, and I knew when the THX came out, it was an improvement over everything in the world, including that. And now, having that been here for a year and a half, and having other things show up, class A things, I'm, I'm, it's hard to ignore that monster down there, like having all that stuff show up in my life, and I'm getting used to like, okay, that's old, and all this stuff is new and special and different, and now we've got this, which brings me right back around to, okay, when's the next thing coming out? Now, I could mention the um, Topping A90, so I will. So the Topping A90 is a just a headphone amplifier, fully balanced, $500. This stack is, and I should have the page open, I hope I have the page open. Wow, look how many waifus there are. I don't have the page open. Sometimes I don't prepare for these things because it's more fun. Yeah, right now, the Element 2, which is the combo, and people will be like, Element Amp? It's not really, it's the EL. Their naming convention, I blame JDS Labs for this. The combo there is 400. The new DAC is 300, and the new amp is 250. So that's 550. So, um, what I was trying to say with the A90 is, I think the A90 is probably a more spectacular whole package amplifier, but it costs as much as the entire stack. So right now, if you're sitting at home and you're like, well, I just need an amplifier Zeos and I have exactly $249, I'm sure plus shipping and tax, this, this, you can't afford the $500 topping A90, holy shit this, will cover 80% of what that can do, 80 or more, because if you don't have balanced equipment, if you just have like, this is single-ended, um, these come with single-ended, but it can be balanced, Neumann's are single, if anything that's just like a headphone, I think most of you are probably looking at power headphones, this is going to do them dirty. And with enough power that you don't give a shit, like you just don't give a shit. I currently have it on, I think, low gain. I'm, okay, I put them on my head. They didn't even smash my face in. Oh, that's that's high gain. You know how I can tell it's high gain? Because it was loud there. I do have something to say about the way this sounds, though. And I don't know if it's just my if it's just my mental capacity just falling apart, but. I feel like, and this has been consistent through several headphones. Like these, these headphones, these are my, these are Sony's, these are babies, by the way. And you can turn the fronts around to, to change the sound. I just want to point that out, and they weigh so little. I forgot to mention how little they weigh. Um, these do not need a lot of gain, yet I run them on high. 
Because when you run it on low and you get it up to about 12 noon, let's blow up mode. Like there. You get a lot more freedom to do this on low gain, but something about high gain on this amplifier makes me want to use that for everything. I've had this before. I don't need to cook tubes right now. We're not comparing tubes. I just wanted to hear this. I've had this before. The Gashelli Labs did the same thing where it's like, you listen to it, you put it on low. All right, it's, it's, it's fine. Then you lower it and you put it on high and you turn it up. And it's like, oh, oh. So I'm not sure if it's just more gain or it's also more current. Because I think low is perfect for IEMs. Perfect, like absolutely, it wouldn't, it wouldn't ever attempt to run high gain. Because you look at this and I, I, it takes me a second to realize, hey, you know what, someone might have an IEM to sit at a desk and use. I usually use them on the go. But on low gain, IEMs all day. On high gain, everything. All day, all the time, as clean as you want, as much power as you want. I should have taken down a, um, like the Argons, just to show you that this can run them, because it can. Uh, Let's look at the... Uh, mind if I unplug you? I love this thing. I love it. Okay. Um, the front is... Um, I'm doing... Careful with this. Don't wipe it off because you start... You hear the relay? That's new. The, um, the old EL DAC did not have a relay to switch between it. It was just a touch and then the color change. This actually, and if you want me to show you that there's a DAC, oh my God, quick, get your spy shots like at the Nürburgring. It's, it's just an aluminum box. But the, uh, the front is your power. Hold it down, light goes off, barely touch it, light comes on. And they've changed something so that it no longer is red, yellow, and blue. It's now blue, red, and orange, and that is a poor change. Like, I understand orange, because it's the coaxial input, and coaxial inputs are usually orange. Problem is, red and orange look a hell of a lot alike. Like, a lot. Like, I, 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 I that's blue, that's red. Did you see it? I have real good vision, and I could barely see it. I mean, you might get used to that, and it's not like you're going to be changing the inputs on this a lot unless you go between blue, which is USB, and then coaxial, and it's just... I'm, I love that. I love, I love the... Let's go back to blue, and now this should work. It should work. It takes a second to turn on. Boom. So now that's playing through USB. And by the way, I'm going to unpack this DAC, which is another one of those DACs, because my living room, in case you've ever been to my living room, uh, where I have my like $3,000 uh, Klipsch Heresies, the Heresy 4s, and the subs and everything, every speaker that I've reviewed in there, where I've used my crown amplifiers and on my main setup, runs off not one, but a pair of the original Element 1 DAX. EL DAX. EL DAX, not Element, you fucked it up, Sios. Um, so just so you know, like, where I put the Element line in my brain, having access to almost infinite supplies, I was like, hey, um, Judas Labs, can you hook me up with some DAX? I could have I could have put more Gashelis in there. SMSL was sending me VMVD1s. I could have got another topping from several places, but no, 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 no. Could you just send me the EL deck? And that's why there's another new one in this, because after this review, my plan is to go into my living room, take the original EL1 DAX, place them with the twos. When I went to um, RMAF, when I did the RMAF room, the Hi-Fi Guide's room in RMAF, if you walked into that room, if you could find pictures of it, because there's really hardly any, because we were very busy and I feel bad, the front of the room had a stack of four or five EL1 DACs because every pair of speakers had its own DAC because that's how I did it with the mini DSP um, NanoDigi. I just switched digital inputs. So I turned digital inputs on and off to a different individual. Uh, it was a chunk of EL DACs to run at RMAF. Again, do you think I trust JDS Labs and their EL DAC? And I actually, I pulled out their amp, just a straight up, just, this is an amp, this is your amp, power, power, 
power in, power switch, uh, high low gain, and then you had input and output because this will actually work as a uh, control. Now the old one, I, it had a thing where you couldn't switch it. The new one and the element two, you, where am I go? You right button is high low gain, left button power, press once, you can see the, the ring, the glowing ring goes out, press it again, the glowing ring comes on, you hear click. You hold that, and then you get that click. Now this volume controls the line outs. So if you have speakers on your desk, you can go between the headphone out and the speaker out. So that's very convenient, and that's the same on the Element 2. The only thing that the Element 2 does, boom, you got USB. So if you want to use USB and you want it all in one, this is it. That's your baby. If you want fiber optic inputs and coaxial, coaxial, coax inputs, you need to get the stack because then the DAC comes with more places to plug things in. Now, um, I'd like to also thank JDS Labs for not just providing these, but fucking inventing them. But Zeos, it's just an RCA cable. Everyone's had them. Yeah, no, bitch. Nah, because these have um, retaining metal in them so that you could bend them to any shape you need and it will stay there. And I can almost get it to do a full loop, like boom. I actually have these. I sent these a couple months ago. In my living room, behind my surround receiver, these are being used as, co as coaxial digital interconnects between the mini DSP Nano Digi I have there and the converters to convert them from coaxial to fiber. So I, I literally have them bent in like this very specific orientation and it doesn't like shove anything off because it's, it's just, I can perfect. Why doesn't anyone else make like six inch cables that have this ability? I'll plug that back in now. Because usually, like when I was doing shit stacks and stuff, oh, I accidentally switched it. That's another issue we'll get to. When he was doing shit stacks, I'd get the, the RCA cables, and if you got short ones, they would always try to do that. And these just, you go, and then that's it, they're permanent. Or I'd get real long ones and have to make a loop so that it wouldn't try to close pin and everything. So, problem just occurred. One of, the, one of the slight issues I have is the sensitivity of that front touch is beautiful for just rubbing your finger over it, but when you go from blue, which is our USB, to anything else, which in this case is red, you lose the DAC. So anything you have USB plugged into it is off. And now it's coaxial, and now it's USB again, and now if I click here and enter, that plays. I'm going to plug something else in. I actually haven't heard these on it, and I took these out because I tested these on another amp recently that wasn't balanced, and I gave them sort of like a, well, these really work better with balanced. So I pulled them out just for today, just to see if that is truly the case, because I love these. These are the Aeon Open X. These are a drop, a drop tuned exclusive. They say uh, drop plus Dan Clark audio. So if you ever wanted that stamped into the top of your head, here you go. Uh, see, it was, it was trying to do the speaker out. High gain. Yeah, no, um... I'd obviously like to spend another 20 or 30 minutes listening before I say this out loud, but, um... Blade Runner Seawall. Blade Runner 2049 Seawall. Uh, oh, God. Yeah, no, these are making the... They make... They move. So, it, it's that same... Shit. It's the same shit. As soon as you are dedicated to a single-ended amp, you can do miraculous things with it. When you have a balance, like the like the 789, that's why people prefer the SP200, which is a cheaper version of the THX amp, but it isn't balanced, really. It's got the balanced connections, but it isn't a balanced amp. 
So single-ended headphones, headphones with quarter-inch jacks, headphones that literally can't be balanced, sound better on it. Because it, it can't fuck it up. Um, did I go over like all the features that this thing has? Because it's not much. I, I do have some complaints still, and I think they carried over from that one. I love the giant, I am a huge fan of a top wheel design. My, my only issue with, with a knob this big and the fact that the buttons are in the back to control power and high gain is that if you brush it, you can brush a very large change in volume. And on some headphones that are hard to drive, that isn't so bad. But if you're putting it on high gain when you shouldn't be, because I said that's the way I like it best, and then you're like, uh, then that, 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 mm. And I haven't had this particular setup hooked up to speakers, like to use this as the preamp, but I'm imagining that would be the scariest moment, right? That now, hopefully you're not putting this like, although I don't, don't think you'd mind front and center of your desk, but um, just be careful is all I'm saying. Don't, 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 don't accident this. Cause if you act, it spins very freely, and if you catch it just wrong, it's going to make very loud things happen very, very fast. But when you're in control, when we're in control, you can just gently, smoothly adjust this, and it's just sex. It's just knob sex. This is knobular sex. Look it up! It doesn't exist, I just made it up. God, people actually looked it up. What? It's a perfect, it's, it's, it's a, almost a perfect stack. It's almost there. It's so close. The, the only, like the, and the only problems with it are that the gentle brush will do that. Like, it's not even a, that was like a fingernail. It will just swap it out. So if you're using USB, that could be annoying. Fiber optic's less annoying because fiber optic just keeps playing. One of the reasons I like fiber optic. You could take a DAC amp that's running on fiber, blow a hole in it with a 357 Magnum, and the computer doesn't care. It just keeps going. It's fiber optic. It can't tell what's coming back. It's just whatever, dog. Um, USB is constantly going back and forth, which is why USB can handle higher bit rates. This is currently running 32-bit um, 384. And you know what? I don't even know if this will handle DSD. I should probably know that before I start. Let's just quickly browse through it. Uh, b -b 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 tech specs. Give me... Oh, look at those numbers. It's got a four layer PCB stack, it's so good. It does D DSD over PCM via USB. Um, it will do 24192 through SPDIF. I don't know if that means fiber. I know coaxial digital usually carries a higher bit rate. I don't care, four, 1644 is fine for me. You wanna know where this channel lies? This is this this channel, this channel is okay with Redbook. I'm okay with Redbook. Doesn't mean I don't have things higher quality, but usually that's just because that's the only thing they're available in because audio files have made them. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Oh, let me open up the box real quick. And then I'm gonna do something. I don't know if I'm gonna make a separate video of it or if I'm just gonna do it, but uh, let me plug this in. Because honestly, what made me decide to do this review now, because I had this over here and I had it, I took it out back and forth. It was my, um, my 600s. These are, these are the old hat, tell you what you need to know. Shut the fuck up. The 600s like it, you have to like it. This is this is the high gain. Always check high low gain with it down because there is a large difference. And if you're like halfway and you're not sure and you hit it and it was low, high is like, wah. So oh, always get to like there and then like, okay, that's low. Okay, that's high. Oh my God, how is Blade Runner still playing? I am tempted to say, with my mouth, my mouth hole. No, I'm not tempted, I'm gonna say it. The HD 600s probably don't sound better on any other single-ended solid-state amplifier. I think these sound best on a tube, like a really good, nice, juicy tube. But they're a little clinical on like a THX. They're a little clinical. And this is not exactly like a colored amplifier. It's not a class A weird Ukrainian rebel amp that does things and I throw a two, like a massively modified Aoun DAC on it. This is a relatively straightforward amp. It's not looking to fuck your music up. Yet, somehow, with whatever it's doing, it can make a headphone that I blatantly know well 
sound probably its best. Like I, 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 I always get impressed occasionally by the 600s, and it's usually with a tube, or it's usually with like some little portable thing that can just power it, yay. But this is like, this means something. Hold on, they're just gonna do the thing. Rob Dugan's Chateau from The Matrix 2. Um, so I also wanna thank JDS Labs, not just for sending this stuff to me, but for changing their packaging. I hope this is real because their old boxes were amazing. Custom cut Kaizen foam and the hole and the box and it like slid apart. And I had to throw those away because no one's keeping the boxes. If you're, if you're one of those people who likes to keep the box after you buy something so that you could resell it in it, that's fine. But I just can't keep that many boxes around. And I feel bad every time I have to throw away something that's like a crazy nice and same box. Now, if it's like an $1,100 headphone or something, I'm always gonna keep the box, even if it never goes back in there. But like a DAC and an amp and power supply. So this is their new like economy packaging and I'm just, the earth thanks you. I thank you. I could actually keep these and use them for shipping. This is a brand new, I did not unbox this. This is what it comes with. I'm going to gently deposit this all on the floor behind me. This is, this is what we go down here on zero views. Um, it's a little, oh, got cards. Demo unit. This product was carefully inspected by Jimmy and JDS as demo unit. And then it still says coax is yellow, and this is definitely not yellow. It's definitely not yellow. If it stops working in my living room and I look and it goes, but it looks like it's red, that that's, that's the only like change that I was okay with it being yellow. Maybe people didn't like that. I, I have no idea what the, um, the consensus was on the internet. So you get box. Um, I think they started oiling the metal because that was like one of the pieces. The old units were like perfectly machined metal and very, very smooth. But yet every time I like touch my nose and then I could draw like a happy face on it, it never came off. So I ended up in one of my videos or my live streams. I had gotten um, cutting board oil or cutting board wax. You're supposed to rub into the wood. And I just cutting boards waxed all my JDS lab stuff. Because if you can't remove the oil, just, it's like when you get a stain on a shirt, like you have a white shirt that you really like, and then you get like tomato sauce on it in an Italian restaurant. What you do is you take your shirt off. You, you say, hey, Antonio, just stir this in with the sauce. And he just takes your white shirt, you stir it in with the sauce, rings it out, all of a sudden you got like a light pink, light red shirt, that's it. And that's what I was doing to the unit. So I was literally just getting rid of the grease. You can't see grease if it's all grease. I'm a brilliant man sometimes. It might be mad, I don't know. So here, this is just feet, beautiful logo on the bottom. The bottom is plastic. This is all aluminum, all one piece shell aluminum. Your touch button. Um, I really like the wires it comes with. By the way, giving this review with silent six, 600s on is like surreal. Uh, one of the nicest USB cables I've seen, and I, I know why, because I think they make them themselves. There's no logo on the ends. However, this rubberized feel does not, this does not seem like a cable that you could just buy, like this rubber. And then they throw these big ass balance on there, these um chokes, and the fucking chokes say TDK. TDK, like the, I don't even know what that stands for, but I know my father used to have cassette tapes that were TDK. So they put big TDK magnet ferrite chokes on it to block any sort of loose electrons that might travel along it. And it's the perfect length for a DAC. Like this is as long as I'd ever want a USB to use on my desk. I use those six foot blue ones, not anymore. Now I'm just gonna take this. And they're gold, by the way. And it comes with a uh, fiber optic cable, which, it comes with little caps on it, which you could take off, and they have like little retaining things so you could keep the caps clean, which is very, it's a good length too, it's like six feet. So they're telling you you could use either fiber optic or USB. Oh God, I wanna listen to the, can I listen to the Quigley soundtrack for a little while? I'll, I'll come back. No, but it comes with like every wire you need. They do pack the power supply separately, and I would have figured with the new packaging they would have tried to, tried to figure that out. But when you get a box from JDS Labs, you get the box that I just opened, and you get another little white box with that massive transformer in it, just floating around in there, this heavy like one and a half pound thing, 16 watts. 
And uh, when you get the stack, you obviously get two of those. This is like a, it's a staple. I feel like JDS Labs is a staple of the audiophile industry, and only a few people know it. Like, everyone's heard of shit. Oh, man, I got that shit. And I think everyone's, like, they're starting to get hold of, like, other boutique brands. Audio God's sort of falling out, but they're coming back. I'm trying to work Gashelli up in the ranks because they are they were nothing when, they, when I messaged them or they messaged me. And I'm really, I'm able to, like, influence them a bit. And JDS Labs, I think they're more known as the people who make the Atom than the people who make the EL amp and DAC. And this is what they should be known for. Because I love the Atom. I just got the Atom DAC and the now with the Atom amp. And that's like a great little $200 stack. But if you imagine how good that stack is, the Atom stack is, that's their entry fucking level. This is their top of the line. Not, not the element, not the singular element where it's everything all in one. This is, this is a great compromise, which, by the way, this thing is heavier than both of those, so you can tell the circuit board's rolling here. This is a wonderful compromise, and it's the neatest, cleanest thing, and if you have nothing, get this, and you will be absolutely happy. But if you ever plan on doing any sort of experimentation or testing, or you want to have access to the DAC, and you could use a splitter on this, and you could split out to something else, or you can run it through here into the amp, and you could run, this is the outputs, because you can do that but you can't split the output of the deck this doesn't have the output i touch the front i touch the front again so you get outs but you can't access the deck well you can access the deck but only the deck at like preamp level so this gives you access to the deck with full line out plus you get fiber optic plus you get coaxial digital it's worth look I'm, I'm i can't argue that it's not worth it it's absolutely fucking worth 550 dollars that's is what it, even if you just got it for the sheer cleanliness of it, you shove that into the corner of your desk, you plug your headphones into it. God almighty, I... I don't want to re-review my 600s. I do, I do, but I don't. There's plenty of other headphones in the sea that people should be listening to, but none of them are this. I love these headphones. I'm going to do an experiment right now. I'm going to pause this video. And I'm going to do something that I meant to do like, I don't know, a year ago? But I didn't have everything set up, so... I, this is... We're about to enter um, Crazy Town. Don't come with me. If you're done with this video, in fact, you know what? Maybe I'll do the, um, the outro, so I don't have to do it later. If you want to support these videos, um, please check out the subscribe star on the Patreon. Because things like this company send, that's grand. But other things where companies don't send it, I have to buy them. I also have to keep the lights on, pay the rent. My cat won't stop fucking eating and farting, which I know doesn't sound like something that I would need your support for, but my God, the mental anguish. I picked her up and she sounded like I picked up a balloon. It was a... <sighs> so check out the Patreon and subscribe star. $5 gets you access to videos early, uh, access to the yard sale first to the 10th of every month, where the original... EL DACs that are in my living room will be in the yard sale because I'm probably going to keep one loose and the two in there are going to be replaced by the 2.0s and if you want to message me any questions you have for the channel or for anything you want those two places will do it for the $5 tier. The $10 tier is the behind the scenes private you get to know everything when it happens as it happens as I unbox. Ask me any questions you want I will answer on my phone with my voice. I'll take pictures for you. I'll check pet. That's the high-end tier. It's a $10 tier. There's higher tiers above that if you're a baller. It's basically just if you're a baller. And I'll usually, like, definitely answer your questions faster than anybody else, as long as I know that you're asking it. Um, yeah. And check out Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guide forums. So now, now that I've said all that, um, so um, I promised people this a long time ago when I actually had the original element. And it's like, I wonder if I got a fiber optic splitter, which I have back there to send all my DAX things, and I have two things. What if I had two identical DAX getting identical stereo signals and then use the left output of one DAC and the right output of another DAC, another DAC and put it into the same amp? Does that make it a balanced DAC? Not really. I've been told many times, and I'm sure electrical engineers are watching this going, you fucking idiot. 
but I promised I would give a listen. Because this is how my living room is set up. My living room is set up with a right DAC and a left DAC, not one DAC split, because it's just a distance thing. It's just easier to run a fiber optic somewhere than to come out with an analog and move it 12 feet to the left. And if you can double DAC, why not? So, like, there's no timing issue that I could detect. What I've heard, what I've been yelled at is, oh, the clock's going to be off. Because when you use fiber optic, it's one-way communication. The signal's coming into the DAC, and it's making sound. When you use USB, it's telling the DAC to do something, the DAC's doing it, and also reporting back to the computer that it has done it. So it can adjust for minute timings. Now, frankly, I don't think humans can really fucking detect that. Like, when you're talking about, what is that, um, jitter? When you're talking about jitter to the levels where, like, a computer, an os oscilloscope that costs $20,000 can detect jitter. The changes in the variation of the speed minutely over thousands of times a second. Remember, a song is 44.1. A normal song is 44.1. That means 44,100 samples a second. And maybe sometimes it's 44,050 or 44,172. That variation, I don't think humans can fucking detect it. But it is happening, and I'm sure it's happening between the left and right hemispheres here. But that, that said, I still think it sounds great. Like, I don't think this is doing anything negative. I would be more... In, I, I'm more interested in if this weird shit that I'm doing right now is a negative effect. I'm not assuming I'm going to do it since it sounds better. I'm just going to do it and I'm going to see if it sounds worse. And I'm not picking that up. So that might indicate I need to um, experiment further. Because they don't make mono DACs. I mean, I'm sure they do make mono DACs. Don't get me wrong. But that would be more like an internal thing where you take a single digital input and then split it. This is taking a single digital input, splitting it. It's still doing stereo calculations. I'm just not plugged into the left-hand side of this one and the right-hand side of this one. And they're actually, they are grounded together though through the amp. So it's not like we're losing ground, but they're just not timed together. They might be firing like, if it was mono and it was firing like this in a perfect situation, they might be firing like this, but at such a rate so fast that no fucking human ear or dog ear or cat ear could detect it, so. I feel like a DJ, like with his turntables out. One day I will DJ for Project Melody. You watch. It'll be there in the corner. DJ Zeal's Pantata. I, 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 I'm gonna play with this for longer than just like the 20 minutes I did before I put the camera back on. But I'm so far so good. I mean, I'm not, look, I'm not interested in making everyone spend another 300 fucking dollars so they could do this so they can mentally think that something's happening. I just always wanted to know. I mean, I do it in my living room all the time, and <laughs> I've yet to hear a place that beats my living room. Just saying. And now that I'm going to put these new, improved, and I, I really, did I, did I touch on the DAC sounding good? Because I don't know how to describe, like, like a good DAC usually has features. This does not have features. So to impress me as a DAC and do almost nothing, uh, yeah. Yeah. Is it worth $300? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I consider these like the benchmark single-ended DAX. Are they balanced? No. Does it matter? No. The end. Oh. ACDC. Beastie Boys, fight for your right. I am fighting for my right to literally party. So I think I'm going to end the review on that. I'm going to power that off. Power both of these off. And I'm going to tell you, uh, I didn't tell you to download the wallpaper. That is available in the description of this video. All wallpapers available in the description of every video. I've already given the spiel earlier today. Earlier in the day, I told you about the Patreon and subscribe store and all that. So I'm just going to leave on this, this site, this. The madness that is Zeos and what his whole shit is about. Like, yeah, this is... It's here already. I didn't have to pay $300 to find out this information. So I may as well just analyze it and see what I can find. And you could look for the results somewhere. They'll be there. Maybe I'll go to Hi-Fi Guides. The forums there need to know that I'm doing mad things. So that's it. I'll see you all tomorrow for another review. Probably shorter, probably more coherent. 
Maybe I won't make you want to buy something. Maybe it'll be something terrible. I don't. I can't guarantee a terrible review or a review of something terrible because I don't look for those things. But uh, thank you to JDS Labs for sending out a, a gaggle of stuff. I'm going to indulge myself in it now. <laughs> it's going to get messy in here. So, I figured I'd tack this on to the end of that review because, I mean, I am reviewing both the amp and the DAC. And if I decide to put the DACs in here under the amps, which you can see that slight red glow, which is actually much dimmer than it was in the Gen 1. Which is good, because home theater, you don't want to have bright, blaring lights. But, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter for most people's. But, um... I don't know if I'm crazy. It's probably just placebo. But I mean, I am feeding $3,000 speakers directly through this amp from that DAC to the 12 and the horn separately. So, meatloaf. Yeah, I'm satisfied. Oh, can it even sound better? Is it even, I mean, I like Dax, but the Dax, ah! Space Dandy, by the way. 